From Richfield High School, TSV Television proudly presents the championship game of the Richfield Optimus Holiday Classic. We present the title match in our girls back bracket, a rematch of last year between the Richfield Spartans and Bloomington Kennedy Eagles. Richfield number six in class 3A, Bloomington Kennedy number three in class 4A. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for joining us. Richfield looking to bounce back and they took a good step in that direction, beating Cambridge Isani in yesterday's seedings to get here. Bloomington Kennedy took care of Highland Park rather easily. Both schools going through a little bit of adversity to start the year. Bloomington Kennedy, of course, began their season playing three state tournaments in their first three games. They beat De La Salle, lost to Providence, lost to Hopkins, but all were close games. Since then, the Eagles have won seven straight, including yesterday's win over Highland Park. Richfield also going through a little scheduling bump of their own. They didn't play many games to start the year, struggled a little bit, worked their way up to a five and two mark, but they went through a stretch of playing three games and three nights last week, starting with Hill Murray, which was a win, a win over Orno, and a loss to Simley by two points. So both teams still looking to get a little more rhythm and really just get through December and this kooky scheduling that could take place before conference play begins. Richfield, it's no secret who they're catalyst is. It's Jessica January who leads the Suburban or Classic Suburban Conference, one of the leaders in scoring, and she's going to need a big game and continue her consistency for Richfield to have a good chance. Bloomington Kennedy still about depth even with their coaching change. Four of their players average double digits in scoring. That didn't change yesterday in their 98-24 win over Highland Park, but you're going to need big games out of Jade Barton and Kenesha Bell to keep Richfield in con or to keep Kennedy in contention. Quick look at the keys to the game. Richfield, it's about transition. They are a quick team, although they do have the capability of playing at different tempos. That's how they beat Kennedy a year ago. Second chances will also be critical, especially without Leah Barnes at center. She bruised her knee last week, will not play tonight. And penetration will be key as well. They do have the speed with Jessica January. Haley Lindblom is back from her calf strain and adds a lot of speed and agility to Richfield's lineup. Kennedy, their keys match the intensity of Richfield. The Spartans will not back down. They want to take advantage of the lane, especially without Leah Barnes available. They have a lot of size down there, Kennedy does, even without E.C. Odor, who's also nursing an injury. And turnovers, that's always a major key. You limit those, you always will have a good chance. Starting lineups are coming up in a moment. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Welcome back to Richfield High School. Let's take a quick look at the starters. Same folks yesterday. So for Richfield, the home team, Jessica January will start. The guard, number 14, Kaylee Adams, who's been starting in the absence of Leah Barnes. She's a Ford, 5'10", Sierra Ford Washington, number 35, 6 guard. Kyla Adams, number 45, 10 forward. And Dominique Hammonds, number 50, the 5'4 guard, who's been starting in place of Limblu. Bloomington Kennedy will start Jasmine Barton, number one. She is the 6'4", eighth grader. Tyra Spencer, number three. She's a guard. Tanoya Wade, number five, at forward. Jane Martin, number 13, at forward. Kanisha Bell, number 15, at guard. I tell you what, Mike, if you want a game that features explosive athletic teams, we sure got them here this afternoon. And a lot of explosive fast players, too and three Division I recruits in the field. Jessica January, of course, going to DePaul University. If you've been following our coverage, you're familiar with that all by now. Bloomington Kennedy has two. Kenesha Bell, de-verbal from Minnesota, but I'm sure will end up at a D1 school eventually when she ultimately decides. And of course, nothing is official till the National Letter of Attendance is signed, and Jane Martin is going to Georgetown next fall. And another side plot, just to add a little more fun to this, the Adams sisters played at Kennedy a year ago, transferred over to Richfield, and now here they are competing against their former comrades. That's another interesting twist to this already intriguing matchup for sure. You know, I think when you, when you uh, delve deeper into this matchup here, Mike, I think it's going to be interesting you know, given that each team is so athletic and so explosive and plays a very similar style, which team can get off to a better start here early on? Which team can assert their style 
early on. I think that's what's going to be one of the key factors in this game. Well, in this matchup a year ago, Richfield got off to a hot start, and Kennedy had no response, and that allowed Richfield to score an upset win. Of course, situation has changed at Kennedy now. The coach has changed. Quinton Johnson yep. is in place, and I talked to him earlier today when the JV game was taking act taking place, and he said the strangest thing he has discovered so far is how many people are already questioning his coaching ability in December, even though Kennedy is seven and two. <laughs> well, you know, whenever you have a, a, a change with a coaching regime, there's always questions that circulate around the new regime and, and I think they have to uh, get themselves established and, and proven and that uh, takes a little time but 7-2 at this juncture I don't think is uh, anything to stick your head in the oven about. And it's still December so, and as we all know championships are not decided no. in this month. Kennedy wearing the navy blue. Richfield wearing the white. Richfield showing 2-3 zone and already a steal. Sierra Ford Washington finds January and one. Jessica January picking right where she left off the uh, last time we were doing this, Mike. And that was at Hill Murray. And they're another school going through some growing pains right now with their younger staff. Jessica January, no growing pains to worry about here. If you followed our coverage, her story is should be familiar to you by now, but January, of course, a two-time state champion hurdler in the year she didn't win last spring. She set the record. Jade Martin with a kiss off the glass. Ford Washington. January, top of the key. January has calmed down Oh, in the games the... I've seen. Long three. That was short. A little outside her range, perhaps. You know, I remember the last time against Hill and Murray, it took January just a little while to get warmed up from beyond, uh, beyond the perimeter. But once she did, boy, she was hot. January hasn't had an explosive game. Her season high is 28 points, I believe. Jade Martin, that's the same play going off the low block. Jane, yes, yeah, January season high is 28, but she has been very consistent. Usually gets about the 20s. Ford Washington barely escapes the backcourt violation, finds Adams, who misses the three-pointer. Kyle Adams uh, couldn't get the rebound, but the dead ball rebound will go to Richfield. Hammonds gets through traffic. There's Kyla Adams. Losing the ball. Kanisha Bell one-on-one -on -one with Kaylee Adams. We've seen that move a few times, and Bell will have to go to the free throw line. Kanisha Bell, the junior. No stranger to these big games. When she gets tired at night, she says she's prone to being goofy. I think As are many you, teenagers. I think that's what you call loosening up. She makes both free throws. Ooh. January is hacked. And I believe it's on Tyra Spencer. I believe you're right. Yes, it is. Of course, I'm right. I'm always right. <laughs> Except when I'm wrong. And when I'm wrong, then I make another right to cancel out the wrong. That's her second personal already for Spencer, so she's going to have to sit for a while. And in her place is Kiara Russell, number 11. Kanisha Bell with a steal. Bell was looking for Jade Martin, and Kaylee Adams deflects the pass. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, Kennedy is applying a lot of defensive pressure out there on the perimeter and causing a lot of problems for Richfield here early on in this contest. Well, speed will not be an issue for either team. There's a lot of track stars, a lot of athleticism overall on the rosters. Jay 
Nate Martin can't hit the fadeaway. Richfield with another try. Kennedy with an early 6-3 lead. But still a ways to go, of course. Hammonds for three. Richfield has not found a rhythm from three-point range all season, but Jessica January with a little athleticism. What a move by Jessica January. She has scored all five of Richfield's points. Ford Washington with the steal, and I have a feeling for Richfield to win this game, they're gonna need some production out of players who normally don't score in double figures. That's exactly what I was going to say, Mike. There's Jessica January, she's consistent. But when you look at the rosters as Adams is struck, you don't see as much poise from the rest of the group outside okay. of January. And looking at this lineup, as I mentioned, four players on Kennedy's roster average double digits in scoring. Richfield just has one. January drawing a double team, escapes herself and draws the foul on Jasmine Martin. I give her an A and an effort for that. <laughs> Gets to the line. She made her first seven free throws yesterday against Cambridge Isani before her first miss. No more, straight up. And a jinxter. We mentioned January set the state record in the 100 meter hurdles last year, even though she finished second in the finals. May look to break that one more time. Of course, the record currently stands at 14.32 seconds. Splits here, and we're tied up at six. Bell can't break the tie. And January, I think, just reached in there enough and to allow Ford Washington to pick up the ball. Kaylee Adams in trouble, but goes to January. Richfield resetting. Ford Washington, long two, off the mark. Rebound, Jade Martin. Georgetown sounds familiar to you as she makes the coast-to-coast -coast play. It's the alma mater of Minnesota Lynx forward Rebecca Brunson, and I'm not sure Brunson has that speed. <laughs> Impressive move there by uh, Jade Martin for sure. You know, one thing that you notice already, Mike, is that Richfield has, is having a very tough time establishing anything down low. They're pretty much restricted to perimeter shooting here right now, and let's see what adjustments they can make or offensively that will give them some opportunities down low perhaps. Richfield called timeout, Kennedy up 8-6, and right now it's mostly a two-player show. Yeah, Jane yeah. Martin for Kennedy and Jessica January for Richfield, and the difference is a pair of free throws by Kenesha Bell. Yeah. Haley Lindblom making her first appearance for Richfield. It's been a gradual return to her role. Not quite ready to start, but the calf injury she suffered has healed enough where she can go in there and give Richfield a huge defensive asset. There's a steal. Jasmine Martin picks it up. Will beat Ford Washington, but comes up short on the layup. Ford Washington just got her hand out there to stop the layup. Oh, boy. Adams. Kennedy fans wanted to travel. Ford Washington. No. She had a big game last year against this Kennedy group that allowed for the upset. And that was the game where Jessica January didn't have an explosive outing. It was Haley Lindblom and Ford Washington who hooked up, and there's Ford Washington to match the score at eight. And the former Kennedy head coach finally making his way in. Of course, his daughter still plays for the team. Jasmine Martin couldn't get the offensive rebound after her older sister missed on the layup attempt. Adams over to January, long three again. 
Did someone forget to tell these folks that the WNBA line, the three-point line was only extended in the WNBA? It's out to FIBA regulations for the curious, so it's going to be 22 feet, or close to that. Yep, carried the ball. Richfield trying to slow things down. Looks like we got a scoreboard problem here, Mike. Scoreboard's out again. Uh, now we're back, I think. You should have been here yesterday. The entire scoreboard got knocked out. Ooh. We only have one clock on this end. Someone kicked the wire. Russell wow. kicks a three-pointer down. Nothing but net on that one. Kennedy up by three, and Richfield still not hitting their three-pointers, and a foul is called against Kennedy. And that's going to go against Jade Martin for reaching in. But the two losses Kennedy suffered to De La Salle or to Providence with, and Hopkins. Providence, of course, they can't play, but when I spoke with Quentin Johnson beforehand, he said, yeah, in March, January on the inbound play, Johnson would hopes he would get to play Hopkins or some of those top teams again because he is already confident that it, Kennedy's players are adapting to his system now. And that game, you know, if it wasn't for a few turnovers, a lot of turnovers by Kennedy, they were in position to score an upset win at that time. Yep. Boy. That's going to go yep. against Kanisha Bell. Yep. Reaching in just a little bit. And she got caught. That's her first personal. Kennedy with only one foul to give. January. That was too strong that time. Bell, 15-footer, good. Quick and efficient there, that's for sure. Matching in intensity was a key. Haley Lindblom with the wow. cleanup. What an alert play by Lindblom. She is deceptive like that, of course, not very tall, about 5'4", so she can sneak her way through. Bobby Beaver also in the game for the Spartans. Bell, bullseye. Wow. And she's pumped. <laughs> also in the game for Bloomington Kennedy, number 21. That is the Shayla Wright Ponder, and we've got a shooting foul. <laughs> It's on right ponder, her first personal foul. And here's Haley Lindblom, career high last year against this group. Lindblom showing no ill effects at all, Mike, from that earlier calf injury that you were talking about. She didn't play much last week when she came back into the lineup and now is playing her usual set of minutes here, splits. And it won't be long before she's back in the starting lineup. Wade for three. Off the mark. Jane Martin with the rebound. And how about a nice jumper there? Looked off balance, too. Lindblom, top of the key. What is it with Richfield and three pointers this season? Well, I tell you, it's, uh, they haven't found the range yet, but if they do, look out. And Jessica January, kickball. Well, one thing that you're noticing, I'm sure already, Mike, is that Kennedy, in those, on that last possession, got you know those second and third chances. Richfield is not right now. Jane Martin gets around Beaver and will go to the line. We 
mentioned Martin, one of the players averaging double figures, leads the team at 16.2. Leader in that conference, Madison Giebert, though, of Eastview. And I know everybody has already penned Hopkins to win another 4A title. It seems that way, but Eastview is putting together a surprising run, if you think about it, and Kennedy nice. still in the mix. I see that Eastview got in a win, uh, a win today, as, uh, as did Edina over Maple Grove. And Eastview and Kennedy are conference opponents, so they will play each other twice in the coming weeks. And that's going to be another tough matchup and a potential state tournament preview of sorts as both schools have a chance. Oh. 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 And that's definitely a foul. What an alert play by Sierra Ford Washington there, getting the steal not being able to finish, but at least getting to the line. Well, let me ask Mr. Unreliable Source over here, Kennedy and Eastview, are they in the same section? Don't think he heard you. I'll ask him at halftime. <laughs> Jasmine Martin back in the lineup for the Eagles. Ford Washington makes both. 19-15 in favor of Kennedy. Russell, top of the key, no. January leaps for the rebound. We know she has hops, Mackenzie Schramm. I don't know if there's some curse going on or what that is. That's a travel dribble. or double dribble. A little indecisiveness there. Richfield just cannot seem to hit their three pointers. Wade losing the ball, but Richfield commits the foul. Kennedy is in the penalty, by the way. No, and that one's going against uh, Kennedy there, Mike. Oh, it is. It's on Tenoya Wade, and Kennedy, as we said, in the penalty, so it's a one-on-one -on -one situation for Richfield. Sierra Ford Washington at the line. Not the best of free throw shooters, but made her first two. Can't hit three pointers. This is one way to stay in the game. What has impressed me most about Richfield in these two days so far is how little Leah Barnes' absence has affected them. I mean, last year they could she had, was on a family vacation, so Lindblom had to start in her place. Russell trying again and comes up short. Rebound right into the hands of January. Clean block by Wade. And it goes off of January's hands. Wow. But yesterday against Cambridge Isani, they held their top scorer, Bryn Littlejander, to four points, dropping her three spots in the state scoring race. And that was the difference. And an easy win for the Spartans. Schramm tries again. Bullseye. Oh, finally nails one. And Quentin Johnson will call timeout. 20 to 19 in favor of Richfield, but well, you know looks what? like I, another close contest between these two is shaping up. Yeah, you know, and what I think is surprising right now is that you know Richfield with that uh, slim one point lead now. They've been getting by without getting into a lot of transition opportunities, which is their forte, Mike. And you're starting to see some support to help out January. As we mentioned, she scored the first six points yeah. for Richfield. And now the other players are chipping in. But that's something we're keeping an eye on. Kennedy... Martin Bell, your two big ones, have been the main contributors. They have not been able to get Tenoya Way going or Jasmine Martin, who are also your double-digit scorers. Yeah. 
You know, look early on here just a bit ago that Kennedy uh, looked like they might have a slight advantage here, but uh, give Richfield credit, they've hung tough. And Kennedy with uh, a slight height advantage has not been able to capitalize down low as I thought maybe they might be able to. Well, keep in mind you've got two players on Richfield who have some familiarity with how Kennedy plays ball. Yeah. But they're all still buddies. I saw the two Adam sisters, their former brethren, yesterday afterwards, and they had a good time. Jane Martin looking for Tenoya Wade. Kanisha Bell was there for the recovery, but a tough shot for Wade, and that's how one yep. miscommunication, Wade's gonna get hit with her second personal foul, but you saw there how one little miscommunication yep. can ruin an entire play. Yep. Still a one-on-one situation. Kyle Adams going to the line. Spencer going back in, in place of Wade, but Spencer also has two fouls. I'm almost a little wild when I look at that scoreboard and I look at the foul situation. But you know, a lot of those Kennedy fouls have been, you know, reaching, you know, just not smart fouls. And a couple have come into backcourt. Yep. Well, Richfield had to deal with that in the first half of their game with Northfield on the boys' end. And they were able to manage their way through, played with a little more discipline in the second half, and Bell is fouled. Richfield had several to give. Give me one. Foul is on Kaylee Adams. That is her second. Richfield converging in, oh. but Jade Martin, no pressure. She's up to 11. Strom is left alone, but the three is short. Scramble, and it goes off of Kyla Adams. So Kennedy will get the ball. Shram was hanging out there beyond the perimeter, just begging for the ball, which seemed to be like forever. When you've got other athletic players, and I saw the same thing with the Lynx and Candace Wiggins being their primary three-point shooter, you tend to forget they're there. Jane Martin drawing the foul. Strong move by Jade Martin, put it up with a double team on her. Martin, a long time player on the varsity roster for Kennedy. And it helps when you make a transition the way Kennedy has when Percy Wade left and Quentin Johnson took over to have effectively the same group. Martin splits, and we're tied at double deuces. Kanisha Bell almost came up with steal on that one. Couldn't quite get it. Double deuces here on both sides in six minutes, Mark Mike. That's what I just said. No. Oh. Are you paying attention? <laughs> Sarah Ford Washington is. She's up to eight points. Kanisha Bell finds Russell on the baseline. Count it. Wow. Nice move by Russell. Some fans don't agree with you. Freshman showing her stuff here in this first half. And a lefty at that. Completes a three point play to break the tie. Beaver blocked by Kanisha Bell. Bell also a track star herself. Oh, 
Calls herself a point guard that likes to drive to the basket. Lindblom, short, but Ford Washington's there. She's rejected, and it's picked up by Russell. She's got speed. Uh-oh, I thought maybe she was gone for a second. Well, she took a hit from Jessica January. That's her second personal. And an interesting situation here for Scott Statham. And he's got a, his top player with two fouls, although Richfield's other contingents have been scoring as of late. Kanisha Bell, fadeaway layup, no good. And it's picked up by Adams. Hasn't made any move to replace January yet. Sticking with the senior leadership. Not good position by Ford Washington there, but they find January in the corner. Swish. Damn. Only a matter of time before she hits those threes. And Richfield up 27-25. Scramble, no jump ball, Richfield stripped it. Lindblom one-on-one -on -one with Bell. Ford Washington, no, and I see that a lot, especially in girls basketball. You get the offensive rebound and you're so quick to get a shot up. Jade Martin scoring again, really likes that low block move. But you see so many players so eager to get rid of the ball on an offensive rebound. January can't get the bounce. They don't give themselves time Ooh. to get in position. And you end up with an empty possession out of it. And Bell took an inadvertent shot to the face there on that one. Oh, uh, let's see. They're going to call it a loose ball foul. And because Richfield is now in the penalty, it will be a one-on-one -on -one situation for Kennedy. Scott Statham a little unbelievable on that call. Our cameraman some, agrees. Looking for he, some explanation on that. Our cameraman thought it was a good call to categorize it as loose ball. Still not happy with that call. Well, I don't think you'd be either if it were against you. A Bella Jr. and I know a lot of folks maybe overanalyze the situation where she decided to renege her verbal to Minnesota, but I guess nothing's official till you sign that letter of intent. A verbal just says, okay, I'm not open. Foul, and that will send Adams to the free throw line. And that's on Jade Martin. That's her second. Fouls mounting. But it's an aggressive game, and these two teams like to run the ball, so you would expect a few fouls to be called, no matter how the crew would view it. One thing uh, that I like that Richfield is doing here, they are making an effort to get it down low to see what they can do and establish something down low and get some opportunities to go to the line, and they've done just that. Although Adam, they didn't cash in there. Adams, Bricks, both. Kanisha Bell on the transition play. Martin and Bell have been the two anchors for Kennedy's offense that was deflected off Kennedy. No! Wow. Well, wow. the officials have a better view than I do, but certainly surprised everybody. Yeah, and yours truly included. No, we don't have replays of that, so. Kanisha Bell taking oh. advantage. What a move by Kanisha Bell. And we said the keys to the game. You've seen Jane Martin do this. Kanisha Bell just demonstrated this goal, taking advantage of the lane, especially without Leah Barnes available. Little push here by Kennedy. They're up now by up to seven. They're up by seven. They've scored the last nine points. January, off balance and try to make something out of nothing, but to no avail. 
A little frustration now on the part of Richfield. If Kennedy scores here, I would expect a timeout. Russell left alone. Off the heel, Kanisha Bell with an offensive rebound. Once again, taking advantage of the lane. And there's the timeout. Yep. Kennedy has scored the last 11 points, and they now lead by nine. Kanisha Bell up to 16 points. That move along that baseline was very, very impressive to be sure, Mike. And for the curious, Kanisha Bell's season high is 22, so she may be putting up some big numbers before this game is over. Time now for Ridgefield head coach Scott Statham to get his team settled down, calm down, get back into their rhythm. Down only nine. You don't want to let this thing slip away now right before the halftime break. And most impressive about what Kennedy has done so far, they're up by nine and only three players have scored. Yeah. Bell, Martin, and Kiara Russell's put in a few. Outside of that, nothing. You would think there might be more issues when you don't have Martin or Tenoya Wade involved, but Kennedy fine with using a two-player tandem right now. Yep. You know, it all seemed to start on that one questionable turnover that Richfield had, you know, when it looked like that ball was tipped by Kennedy, but they didn't call it. Called it a back, uh, over and back violation on Richfield. And that's when things started to seemingly go downhill for the Spartans. Of course, still an eternity to play. And Richfield. Haley Limblum wow. called for the elbow. It's a player control foul, so no free throws are awarded, but that only mounts to the frustration. Kennedy applying some trapping defense here and is causing a lot of problems for the Spartans here in the last few minutes. I was going to say Richfield not having the easiest of schedules in December, traveling violation on Jasmine Martin, in part because of how it's structured. They played one game against Staples Motley, then they didn't play for about a week or so before they played St. Paul Central, a week and a half. And then last week, as I mentioned in the Open, three games and three nights. Beating Hill Murray and Orono, losing to Simley. And now you've got a back-to-back -back here. Scott Staten told me he was be, he'll be thrilled once Richfield gets past the second week of January. So that's when the schedule takes some semblance of normal. Jasmine Martin can't get the turnaround hook. And Richfield will get the dead ball rebound. Jasmine Martin, the eighth grader, not afraid at all to get in there and mix it up. And her contributions in the games I've seen have impressed me. For an eighth grader to play varsity ball against some of the top teams, especially when you've got Hopkins and Neela yep. Sal, and, you know, Richfield on the schedule. Adams no good and she released too quickly on the putback attempt. And Kennedy has played an impressive schedule thus far. Playing three state champions. You've got the 3A runner-up here in Richfield. Eastview made state last year. Lakeville North made state. They're all in the same conference. Boy, what an upset last night. Holy Family beating Lakeville North. Beating the number nine team, although, as I've said, regular season games, I don't put much stock in, just because it, with the playoff format, Jane Martin going to the line, it's double bonus for both teams now. With the playoff format and everybody going in, that's when it counts. Yeah. I'll never forget your reaction when Anoka qualified a couple years ago. <laughs> I went through enough last night. Don't get me going on that again. There were a lot of boots, huh?
Down 10 now, let's see what the Spartans can do here. Bobby Beaver trying, but they didn't move the ball quickly enough to get Kennedy off their assignments. The run is now 12, January pokes it away. Weaves through the double team wow. and scores! That ends the 12 point streak of Kennedy. Will Kennedy hold for the final shot? I would assume so. No, but not when Kanisha Bell's left open in the lane. And a foul. Who got hit with the elbow? Yep. January got hit. And it should be a loose ball foul. Or no, they're going to call the player control. It's on Bell. But that takes Kennedy's shot away. Richfield with one more chance. See, they can free up January here with 4.5 seconds left. And Ford Washington's had a few plays. But you're right, they're going to probably look to go to January. But she loses control of the ball. That will not count. Halftime, Kennedy up 37-29 thanks to a 12-point streak late in the first half. Yeah, and, and again, Mike, a lot of that was due to the excellent defensive pressure that Kennedy was applying on the perimeter with that trapping defense, getting Richfield into some trouble and giving Kennedy some opportunities, which they converted on. We'll pause for a few minutes and review our first half numbers. You're watching the championship match of the Richfield Optimist Holiday Classic here on TSB Television. Welcome back to Richfield High School as TSB Television continues day two of the Richfield Optimist Holiday Classic. I'm Mike Peden and he's Alex Nagel. And we have the championship game of the girls back at, between Richfield and Bloomington Kennedy. The Eagles are up 37-29 and I haven't seen Richfield take the floor yet. Well, I'm sure Scott Statham and his coaching staff are making some adjustments here as they come up prime for the uh, second half, Mike. You know, it was interesting, you know, Kennedy, as we said earlier, Kennedy made that little decisive run in the closing minutes of that first half. They were applying a lot of defensive pressure out there in the perimeter with a lot of trapping, which posed a lot of problems for Richfield and some turnovers. And that enabled Kennedy to get on that little run, which gave him the uh, advantage that we have here right now. And Richfield taking the floor now. Richfield's back. Recapping the first half, as we mentioned for Kennedy, just three players scored, but their two anchors, Kanisha Bell and Jade Martin, were significant factors. Bell with 16 points, Martin with 15 points. Richfield, Jessica January leading with 13. Sierra Ford Washington with eight. And Lynn Bloom and Schramm have three apiece, but uh, all that talk about balance and spreading the ball around, getting everyone involved right now, Kennedy not using that strategy and it's paying off. Yeah. <laughs> usually works the other usually goes the other way around, but I'm sure they'll take it. And, and you know, as much as I'm sure Scott Statham would love to have some balanced scoring, you know, I'm sure he won't have any problem problem at all if Jessica January decides to take over this game for the Spartans here in the second half, Mike. Kennedy wearing the Navy, Richfield wearing the white, and again, injuries affecting both teams. Kennedy not having E.C. Odor available and Richfield won't have Leah Barnes back until next week. January out to Hammonds. And a three-pointer a little long from Kaylee Adams, but Kyla races in for the O board. Hammonds long two, switch. Big bucket for the Spartans here early on in the second half, Mike. Hammonds prefers the baseline jumpers. Richfield still in that 2-3 zone. Ooh. They leave Jasmine Martin open, but her mid-range J is too long. Jade Martin 
Under a double team, kicks out to Jasmine Martin, and this time she hits the baseline, Jay. I believe those are her first two points this afternoon. Yes. That's the right wow. call. No, that was the right call. Uh, it, the pass hit Bell, and then it went off of Kaylee Adams. I could tell because the ball made a small change in its trajectory when it made contact with Kaylee. You're always right, Mike. <laughs> Spencer to Tanoya Wade, and she can't get the turnaround fade away. Jasmine Martin on the line. She's too strong. Kaylee Adams at the board. Adams losing the ball. Jasmine Martin one on one with Ford Washington. She can't finish. And a missed fast break chance for the Eagles. And a big break for Richfield there. So Kennedy had the opportunity to go back up by double digits. Playing a little zone now, it looks like. Hammond's on the line. It's it again. She reminds me of Simone Augustus. It's like if you could just go a, a foot further back, you could hit some threes from that range, but good from long twos. Yep. Those 17 footers. Wade can't get the triple. And despite all the changes on both rosters, or both schools, like new coaches, you know, some shifts in uh, the rosters themselves, we're getting the same result. Close matchup between these two. Ford Washington gets her own rebound, wow. and we'll get a three-point play opportunity. And you know what's key here early on in this second half, Richfield is getting those second and third opportunities that they weren't getting in the first half, Mike. Ford Washington breaks double digits. And she's been very effective from the free throw line tonight. It's a three point game now. Oh. Bell looking for Jasmine Martin. Wow. And Martin has a chance to counter with her own three point play. What a pass by Kanisha Bell. And then examining that coaching change further, of course, Quentin Johnson came over from Bloomington Jefferson, so he had seen Kennedy's team before, had some familiarity with the group. Scott Stadium came up from the coaching staff that was led by Liam Wise for so many years. Jasmine Martin, the eighth grader, completes the three-point play. All of a sudden asserting herself here in the second half. I've got a feeling she may be featured in next year's breakdown. Adams, too strong, and Jane Martin with the board. Martin, no foul. January is hit, but gets the rebound. Tried to find for Washington. The pass was just a little too strong, and no fast break chance for Richfield. But January will get a three-point play, or a three-point shot off, and that goes off the backboard. Ford Washington, scrappy. He's been racing it. Racing in for a few boards tonight. She'll fire along too. No. Charge. Jessica January draws it on Jade Martin, and that's her third. Wade also has three fouls. Uh oh, and a technical? And that's huge. Oh my gosh. Remember, technicals count as personal fouls. Oh my gosh. And I. It sure is. Wow. And that's on Jade. So she's up to oh, four wow. Oh, wow. for running the mouth. Oh, boy. And that is a huge loss here for Quentin Johnson with 13.49 left. 
I didn't really see what she said, Mike, but whatever it was, it caught the referee's ear, and he wasn't hesitant at all to call it. Wow. Well, January will shoot a pair here. This happened coincidentally yesterday. It was uh, Jody Lidl, the Cambridge Iceni head coach, who was hit with a technical. But in those situations, a bench technical does not count on the team category. But keep this moment in mind. Yeah, the 13.49 left, mark. Jade Martin hit with a charge and a technical foul. And as a coach, that has to be the worst thing. Jasmine Martin on a fast break opportunity, goodbye. Well, that's one way to make up for it. Well, Kennedy's going to need some production. Out. They're going to need other folks to step up now because the, the oh, big oh, loss. Oh, what a play by Jessica January. And they call a foul on January. That's going to be her third. The bat official said there was contact and overruled the call made by the baseline official. And that's three now on January. And that sends Jasmine Martin to the line and one of the Bloomington Kennedy players in double digits as we mentioned. up the mess. Wow, what a steal by Kanisha Bell. That was a bounce pass into traffic and Jasmine Martin will go to the line once more. And interestingly, Mike, Kennedy is doing all this. Jade Martin on the bench. I think Kennedy got fired up. I think so too. Strange turn of events here for sure in the last few minutes. Well, it wouldn't be fun if everything went according to script. <laughs> Kennedy pushes the lead back to 10. Kennedy looking to extend their winning streak to eight games. Richfield looking to get another upset of sorts, at least in terms of how the rankings are perceived. And She's trying to hit Bobby Beaver down low, and she let her too much. Kanisha Bell wow. off the pass from Russell. And what I've noticed with Kennedy, like I mentioned, other players now have to step up because Jade Martin won't be able to play until late. Scott Stadium will call timeout with 12.17 left. And so now Kennedy's other players are taking it upon themselves yeah. to fulfill that role. Yep, they sure are, and, and they're doing it with a lot of poise and confidence right now. After that technical foul was assessed to Jade Martin. And at the start of the season, I covered the Pat Patterson event at Hamlin. I talked to Quentin Johnson, and he said one of the things he wanted to do when he took the head coaching job at Kennedy was to draw plays and strategies that would utilize a more sense of an IQ, a basketball IQ that rewards intelligence and making good moves and good decisions. And we're seeing Kennedy yeah. not flustered, not frustrated over what happened to Jade Martin. They are just playing their usual ball, and here they are up by 12. Well, you know, and I think we've seen them progress, you know, from when I last saw them play against Hopkins back in November, you know, I think they've taken some huge strides forward, wouldn't you say, Mike? And the ironic thing is how many folks uh, Quentin Johnson has talked to me about who have said that Kennedy's players weren't smart enough to run a system, among other things. It's amazing how people can sometimes take the high school level yeah. a little too 
seriously. Yeah. And I remember when De La Salle, before they won their back-to-back -back state titles, they finished third that first year. Faith Johnson Patterson took over, and De La Salle fans were upset about that, even though they finished 31 and one. And there certainly weren't too many somber faces here at Richfield, even though they got dominated by De La Salle in that state championship a year ago. They still talk about how fun it was to compete in the state tournament. Another Richfield turnover down low. And Kennedy wants to get those feelings again. They have not qualified to a state tournament since 2006. The last year, Jenna Smith was on the roster. A lot of good players on those teams. Well, you talked about it as I was there for that uh, Kennedy Hopkins game. That was a bit of a rivalry between the two. That was both in 05 and 06. And a, lot, and a lot of history between the two schools. Speaking of history, we've got a foul on Richfield. Bloomington Kennedy, home to a few alumni, including uh, Steve Ruchin. If you've heard of his name, I don't believe so. Former writer for Sports Illustrated and his wife, none other than Rebecca Lobo. Oh, wow. Went to Bloomington Kennedy. And of course, Richfield having a little bit of history themselves. In fact, history is just down the street as Dominic Hammonds misses the two. Neighboring Richfield High School. I'll get to that point in a moment, but Kanisha Bell finding Russell. Jasmine Martin on the offensive rebound, and she will go to the line. And suddenly, everything going Kennedy's way here seemingly, Mike, in the and, last couple of minutes. Yeah, and this was set after Jay Martin went out. I know that wasn't part of the strategy, but I don't think Kennedy's complaining with the sequence of events. Did you want me to record this? All we're missing is a jacket toss. Are you still trying to figure out what that means? No, I was just saying it uh, looks like uh, Mackenzie Schramm just checked back in for the Spartans. She did. Martin splits. The Shayla Wright ponder, no. Gets it on the second try. And the lead is extended to 15. And another steal. Wow. Lindblom poked away by Russell, but she comes back on the defensive end to swat away another fast break. Richfield, oh, go ahead. It was just a great hustle there by Lindblom, preventing the easy two. And Richfield's history is right next door to the school because that's where the Richfield Historic, Historical Society is located. Wade missing the three-pointer. Ponder there, can't get it. And she's going to the line. Richfield playing out of sorts right now, and Jessica January is going to go back in. And Kennedy getting those second and third opportunities as well. That's not only getting them points, but getting them to the line as well. Richfield now out of fouls to give. The technical free throws by January made it a four-point game, if I believe, and now Kennedy has scored the last 12. Make it 13. And they have a chance turnover. to extend it. That pass was too strong. And they will extend it. It's Russell on the basket. 15 straight points. And a blocking foul called on Russell and the freshman a little jumpy about it. But not many things going wrong for Kennedy right now. January draws the foul. She's going to have to do a lot more of that here in this second half. Down 19. Ball number 15, Kenesha Bell. For the third person. Bell picked up her third personal foul. Thank you. 
And we're seeing a similar story out of Richfield. January doing her usual work, but I think for Richfield to be a legitimate contender down the road here, like you said before, Lachey will right ponder finding some action late in the second half. Lindblom pulls up and short. And that's been one of Richfield's woes this season, long distance shooting. Tyra Spencer has checked into the game for Bloomington Kennedy, number three. And Scott Staten got the timeout call before Kennedy could force a jump ball, so Richfield will keep possession here. But the Eagles are up by 20, and I think you're seeing the difference play out here with Kennedy's depth beating Richfield. Yeah, yeah, that, and of course the uh, extraordinary circumstances from just a few minutes ago just seemed to fire up Kennedy, give him a, a spark that uh, you know just came out of nowhere. It seemed like. Well, you saw what happened to the Minnesota Lynx in the finals after uh, yeah. Reeves' jacket toss. That was the only game they won. I think I think she needed to get rid of that a few more times. Yeah. Fifteen one now. Richfield did break that streak of fifteen straight points from Kennedy, or seventeen, or something like that. Ford Washington will go to the line. Nice move there by Sierra Ford Washington along the baseline, drawing the foul, getting the line. And if you follow the 3A field, it's really interesting to see how that field has been shaken up in the first month of the season when you compare it to the preseason rankings. Remember, Richfield was number one coming into the season. Ford Washington makes both. And De La Salle was up there. What a second half so far by Jasmine Martin, the eighth grader. Hardly involved at all in the first half. She's really been mixing it up here and getting some opportunities here in the second half, Mike, for the Eagles. Well, with her older sister on the bench, this is when you need to step up. But take a look at this. Fergus Falls, they're up in the, the number one slot right now. De La Salle wow. trying to get back up there. But they had a couple of uh, losses to Kennedy and to Eastview to start their season. De La Salle's always started slow. Richfield, some polls had them at number one. Now they're down to number six. Mackenzie Schramm, too strong. And it's going to Richfield. Simley was ranked number four, and I guess if there was one team that I thought needed to prove their ranking, it was the Simley Spartans, and they've fallen off the top ten after a few losses to teams that turned out to be surprises, including Tartan. Russell, short on three-pointer, January with the rebound. Minchaska's still been in the mix, and there's wow. Adams with a nice. left-handed layup. Kaylee Adams to get on the board. But Richfield's gonna need a little more down 18 here. Jessica January with four fouls. And both schools out of fouls to give. Wade was hit on the attempt, and that will send her to the line. Wade, the daughter of Percy Wade, the former head coach who did win a state title for Bloomington Kennedy back in 2005. Well, at 834 here, down 18, this is where if you're Richfield, you've got to find a way to get some stops. You can't be satisfied with just trading baskets with Bloomington Kennedy right now, Mike. And you have to be efficient with your possessions as well. Wade has not been active tonight, but hasn't needed to be with the performances from Bell, Jade, and Jasmine Martin. 
Back to a 20-point margin. Schramm lines up, bullseye. That's one way to do it. 63-46 in favor of Bloomington Kennedy. Looking for a little payback, and that foul's gonna be on Schramm, and we're seeing Richfield playing a one step behind now. I mean, you, we talked about penetration, trying to prevent it on Kennedy's end. That was one of the keys to the game, but Kennedy has really established themselves in the lane tonight. Yeah, they, they really have. So that sends way back to the line for another pair. And it's worth a commendation for Wade. You know, her dad leaves the head coaching job. And so you have a lot of familiarity. You have that family connection. It's no longer there. And still has enough passion for the sport to continue with a new head coach. Well, I think it just shows her love for the game and the team as well. Well, and as we mentioned, Bloomington Kennedy has not been to the state tournament since 2006 in 4A. They've had some good years, but they would suffer some upset losses. That ball should be going to Kennedy, and it will. Suffered some upset losses in the sections that took them out of the running and allowed other teams to get in. But this might be the year they finally get back. And if they do, I still believe either Kennedy or Eastview would have the best chance at taking down Hopkins. Conventional wisdom would definitely suggest that. Another easy inside basket. Tenoya Wade picking up the pieces. Margin up to 21. Well, conventional wisdom. I mean, we, there's still Minnetonka. Three-pointer for Adams is good. That brings her up to five, and we're going to have another timeout. But Kennedy not in any real danger yet unless Ridgefield comes out with a big run. We haven't seen the makings of that yet. Ridgefield uses up their final timeout. Minnetonka hasn't played Hopkins yet. They will when they get to late conference play. Of course, there are yep. only five teams in that conference, so <laughs> the conference <laughs> season very short. But Central played them last night and got destroyed, yep. and we're going to be on Facebook. <laughs> That's a Booker taking some photos and having a little fun with us. Hopkins dismantled St. Paul Central as the Minutemen made just one field goal in the second half and against a team like Hopkins that spells virtual doom. Yep. Eastview hasn't played them, but Madison Gebert has evolved significantly as a point guard for that team and has really revived that program. I like it. And, and they I were like semifinal semifinalists last year, so we're, you, it's you not know, to say Eastview had a down year, just Madison Gieber made them that much better. And you know, I, I really like that Eastview team. They hustle, they scratch, and they claw, and they fight, and they never give up. And uh, we talked about if Kennedy doesn't commit as many turnovers as they did against Hopkins in that first week of the season, perhaps they would have picked up a victory. Yep. I think this is a team that has learned a lot since that loss to Hopkins at home. And they've done it in a relatively short time frame, too, as well, Mike. Well, they're the only school that can claim that they played three defending state champions for their first three games of the season. And even that Providence loss, as Tenoya Wade hits the long jumper to go to double digits, they learned a few things from that, too. Yep. That was an overtime defeat and where the Eagles did not score a single point in overtime and no field goals were scored at all. It all came from the free throw line. Ford Washington, floater is short. Bell stops, pops too strong. Right ponder with the rebound and will go to the line. The Shayla Wright Ponder, a freshman forward. And has been getting.
getting some action late. Matching her season high. Can't break it. Lindblom tries to save it, couldn't do it. But looking at this Richfield team, I see a few similarities to what De La Salle went through at the start of the season. But De La Salle settling in now. Jade Martin back in the lineup. I think she's calmed down from what happened earlier. Well, that foul and technical assessed to her proved to be the turning point. It was the turning point for Kennedy yep. in a very positive way. They've been on fire since that point. And Richfield hasn't had much to show for it. Oh my goodness. Kanisha Bell with a little razzle dazzle. There's one for the highlight reels for sure. Well, Kennedy's win streak will continue and there's a microcosm of Richfield. Throw it to your head coach is not going to produce very many good <laughs> you results. You knew our camera person was going to pounce on that the first time that happened. <laughs> he's, he's made that comment more than once. That's his cardinal rule. Never pass to your coach. Now that is a good passing target. Jade Martin. She'll usually finish and did just there. She's up to 19. We might now still need a few more baskets. We just might go to the mercy rule before long. Uh, we're running out of time here, but. Well, Jessica January trying to do a lot here. Well, and it's frustrating and to finish up that point on Richfield. I'd say this team and De La Salle, the two finalists last year, went through the same test. Both teams having talent, but losing some solid role players that you wouldn't value until they left. With De La Salle, it was Maya Lloyd and Mariah Adonine. Yeah. Taylor Tony now stepping, thing, stepping it up for the Islanders, and Natalie Ewell has had a couple of good games. Richfield hasn't found the secondary option yet. You had Hannah Wise and Brianne Guyton. Wise was your sharpshooter. Guyton was small but scrappy in the post. No. No. And Richfield hasn't found the same chemistry yet with this current crop. And, you know, I think that's a key word, yet. But if I, Richfield's going to get back to state and do some damage there, because they've got a tough section, LaShayla Wright Ponder with another layup. And they've got Benilde St. Margaret's in their section. Simley's going to be a tough foe, perhaps. I mean, they're not consistent, but when they're on fire, they can be dangerous. They're going to need to find some way to get support or they may not be back at state. Well, you know, you would think just looking at it, that Hammonds, since Eugene Martin's going in, is that Hammonds with her Lindblom could easily fall into that spot. Would you think, Mike? Lindblom could. I mean, she is a good defensive stalwart, but doesn't have a whole lot of offense to compliment her. And oh, my goodness. You don't see that happen very often. Richfield's got to be frustrated right now. Well, I think you're, you're seeing a lot of frustration set in. And when you when you lose easy passes like that, that's just general frustration. Oh, Richfield will fall to five and three. Kennedy will improve their winning streak to eight and move to eight and two on the year. And here come the reserves and. Richfield perhaps suffering their toughest loss of the season. Lindblom trying to put it over over a mountain and she does draw the foul though. It doesn't help in Richfield's case that Barnes can't play, but it, of course she's still growing into her body. She's a year younger than her class would indicate. Lynn Bloom, as we mentioned before, the homecoming queen last fall for Richfield. And uh, 
Both she and January have a significant Twitter following. In fact, I believe they both have more followers than I do. Certainly more than I do. Well, I'm at 500. I'm at 591. Wade can't add three more, but there's Tyra Spencer. Good effort, but she stepped in the out of bounds line. I think so. <laughs> With Tony's math, I just calculated this. He's suggesting you have a negative number of followers. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. But I don't I know. Did. I don't think Twitter allows negative integers. And here come the reserves now for both teams as this game. Bobby Beaver back in there for the Spartans. And there's number ten getting the kiss Whoa. off the glass. Tenzin Zega. <laughs> Richville could have used that a few minutes ago. But the 13-49 mark, the score was 38 to 42 after the January free throws. Yep. 38-44 was something. It was somewhere along those lines, but well, I mean, it was just, it was real, you know they were within striking distance. They were within. And, and you would have to figure that if they were going to make their move and and tie it back up, or perhaps get their nose out in front again, that was going to be the point to do it, and, and they, they weren't able to do it. Kennedy scored 17 points yep. unanswered. And they respond with a triple from Zakira El Saeed. There's a name that even I would be afraid to try and pronounce. Tony's favorite was from Osseo with the Oconquo sisters. Oh, boy. <laughs> I knew that subject was going to come up. <laughs> I never had trouble with last names. <laughs> Just first names, right? Just the names I'm supposed to use. <laughs> <laughs> but this will be another convincing win for Kennedy, and they may become a sleeper pick in Class 4A as Wright Ponder adds two more to her total to break double digits for the first time this season. Well, you know, now, Mike, the big question for Richfield becomes how do you put this loss behind you and get ready for the battles after the first of the year? And Kennedy is going to call a timeout with 1.36 left. Perhaps try to get to so they can get the uh, starters out of there. And Nate Booker's already leaving the building. Yep. Kennedy's uh, photographer. But I, I think that's going to be a big, uh, a big key here for Richfield uh, going forward. You know, getting past this game, you know, we get into the first of the year. It's a new year, new battles coming up. You know, I think you have to try and keep a positive outlook. You know, put this one behind you. And that's not always an easy thing to do from a mental standpoint, but you have to find a way to do it. I still say the 3A field has some parity to it. I mean, Fergus Falls the number one team, but not being able to play a lot of the Metro schools, it's hard to factor that ranking as a sole proprietor. Yeah. That would be one team I would be very interested in seeing play. And Chaska coming out of nowhere. And speaking of coming out of nowhere, that was Linnea Wright Ponder hitting the triple, and we are officially in running time mode now. Seems like when everything is going right, everything will fall. And sure is for Kennedy right now. Taylor Moore at the line as we're in stat padding time. And, and Kennedy not far off their offensive pace from yesterday. It was a 98 to 24 win over Highland Park and a game that you, know, you couldn't do much about. Everybody oh. knew Highland was on a down note, but Kennedy was still aggressive and they didn't back off, which is always good to see. But against a team with a higher caliber of Richfield. This is another step to convince not just South Suburban foes, but again, the folks that Kennedy lost to early in the season. They're not backing down. Anna Thea Duke, oh, she, she wowed the bench yesterday, hit a couple of threes and <laughs> was the subject of many celebrations. 
they loved it when she got on the scoreboard for her first varsity points. A giant second half for Bloomington Kennedy. And they come away with an 88-53 win. Led by Kanisha Bell and Jade Martin and Kennedy staying composed when they had a chance to unravel. Yeah, they, they sure did. That that technical follow up the 1349 mark on, on Jade Martin could have been their downfall, but give credit to uh, Quentin Johnson's team here, Mike. You know, they hung tough on a hostile environment and they got the job done. And they and they, I think even more importantly, they've shown that they've grown a lot since the month of November on a lot of fronts. And they're going to be awfully tough to beat, I think, here after the first of the year. They're going to be a big factor coming down the stretch and should probably be in the mix for the target center, I would have to think. We'll try to get a word with a couple of the Kennedy players. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on TSB Television. Mike Beaton here with Jade Martin and Kanisha Bell, Kennedy's pair of 20-point scores tonight. And uh, Jade, a big moment for Kennedy, 13-49. You had to sit out after getting two fouls in a row, and then Kennedy just stepped up all around. So how did uh, how did you think the team stayed composed at that point? Um, well, we have a good team with me, and we have a good team without me because we have, uh, we're pretty much deep. So if a uh, ref gets us down, then we, we're still fine. Kennedy's death really showed tonight as they uh, pulled away, especially after that point uh, when Jasmine Martin put up a lot of numbers and then Tanoya Wade uh, put in a few baskets late. Yeah. What, what, is, what was the question? Well, just uh, would you elaborate on that, just how the other players stepped up in your absence? Oh, um, I mean, when one player is out, a different player has to step up, and tonight it was Kenesha, Jazz, and Tanoa. So. You won eight games in a row now after uh, losing a pair to Providence and Hopkins. How do you think Kennedy is um, bonded uh, with the coaching change and just with this roster in general uh, through this first month of the season? I mean, it was like a, it was a tough coaching change. I mean, we like we weren't we like didn't accept it at first, but like now we're like cool with him or whatever, and we're like getting in a flow. And we're young, but like our young girls are really good, and we rely on them, so they have to be. And Kanisha, I'm sure you have a few uh, notes to say on the coaching change. That was one of the big things. Quentin Johnson coming in, replacing Percy Wade, and he talked about kind of that process. So how did you first respond to him, and how do you uh, take his approach now? At first, I was just wanting to get to know him, see how he played. I heard that he was like a good coach and stuff, but we was really so like attached to our old coaches. We was just like judging how he was going to like coach us. So now that we get like used to him is is we have better communication with him and play as a team more like he taught us to. What have you all learned in that first month? Is losing the Providence and, Ken and and Hopkins maybe folks are thinking what's going on and you know here you are winning eight in a row and uh, perhaps silencing a few of those critics for lack of a better term. I think the game against Providence we was just like we really didn't come to play. We was really basically wanted to like play DLSL. We was just into that game, but we thought we was like downgrading the team, thinking that we were just gonna come in and just get get them off the court. But at the end, the end of the day, they end up beating us, and we had tried to get past that by coming, playing how we play as a team, working hard to win these other games. I know you folks are big picture thinkers, thinking about March, but. Beating Richfield the way you did after getting upset by this group a year ago, is how does that symbolize Kennedy's progression at this point? That we play more as a team. We play like everybody. When one ain't stepping up, somebody else is. We got we try to get everybody heads in the game, like keep them up when they down. Basically, try to tell like get them to play better. And of the two of you, who had more razzle-dazzle moves tonight? Because I know you had some fancy passes and you had some uh, nice moves down in the low post. 
Misha. She's, she's more the show off than I am. I'm more of a basic player. <laughs> Your assessment? Uh, I think Go James. Ahead, take it. Take I, I guess I can take it. <laughs> Only on passing, though. I just be trying to get everybody a chance to score. Well, you did talk about being a point guard that likes to take it to the basket and do some things in that uh, breakdown book, and so you, you were just showing that, you know, best backing up your words, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, I got to. I, that's the that's how we play as a team. Everybody used to my passes and stuff, so it's easier for everybody to catch them, everybody to know how we like play as a team when we play. Okay, last game of the calendar year, so is there anyone you want to say hi to, and there are any New Year's wishes you want to get on camera? You, Jade? Um... Shout out to my mom, my dad, my family. <laughs> what about you, Kanisha? Yeah, I want to shout out my mom, dad, and my family too. Friends, basketball players. <laughs> Dwayne Wade, love you. LeBron, <laughs> love you. <laughs> if they're watching, hopefully they will be impressed by that. But uh, congratulations. Thanks for speaking with us. And uh, good luck as uh, you get ready to take on your South Suburban brethren. Thank you. That was Kanisha Bell and Jade Martin, Bloomington Kennedy winning the Richfield Optimus Holiday Classic Tournament Championship. For everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful 2013.